Okay, tonight we continue reading Captain Underpants and the terrifying return of Tippy Tinkle Trousers. We are up to chapter 23, Thursday. Things were back to normal on Thursday. Kipper stood in front of the school and made every kindergartner hand over their lunch money. Things are going to change around here, Kipper told the children. Starting tomorrow, your taxes are going up. You kids are going to have to pay me four bucks a day or it's wedgie time. Kids. Kipper's three friends watched the shakedowns from a distance. Finally, they approached Kipper, Kipper nervously. Dude, said Loogie, what are you doing, man? I'm taking back what's rightfully mine, said Kipper. But aren't you afraid of the ghost of Wedgie McGee, asked Bug. There is no ghost of Wedgie McGee, you moron, yelled Kipper. It's all a setup. I figured it out last night. Somebody has been picking my padlock and putting stuff in my locker. But who would do that, said asked Loogie. The same person who's been writing those stupid texts on my phone, said Kipper. But it's all going to end today. How, asked Loogie. I got a new padlock, said Kipper. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a brand new Super Duper Combo Lock 2000. This thing is totally pick-proof, said Kipper. The four friends walked into the school and headed for the lockers. Kipper unlocked his old padlock and threw it in the garbage can, along with the key around his sweaty neck. Then Kipper put his all-new pick-proof combination padlock on his locker and clicked it shut. Let's see somebody try to mess with the, me now, Kipper sneered. At noon, when the pizza delivery guy showed up with the lunch for the kindergartners, Kipper stopped him in the hallway. We'll take those pizzas, said Kipper. But I'm supposed to deliver them to the kindergartners, said the delivery guy. We'll do it for you, said Kipper. Sorry, said the delivery guy, but I've got strict instructions from Wedgie McGee to... Oh, Uncle Bell Benny, Kipper yelled. <clears throat> Mr. Krupp came bounding up the hallway. Boom, 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 boom. What seems to be the problem, Kipper? He asked. This guy is delivering pizzas to the kindergartner, said Krupp. Said Kipper, is he allowed to do that? Absolutely not, said Principal Krupp. Those kids are on diets. See, said Kipper to the delivery guy. Now give me those. Kipper's crew took the pizzas and the pop away from the delivery guy they brought it straight to the kindergartner's table in the cafeteria and started stuffing their faces. Mmm, said Kipper to the hungry kindergartners. This pizza sure is tasty. The four barbarians devoured eight whole pizzas between them and finished off 14 cans of pop. They, then, they all sold, then they sold all of their leftovers to some of the other students. Mmm. Too bad the kindergartners can't buy any, Kipper laughed. But they don't have any money, do they? George and Harold were heartbroken. They had already seen Kipper's new padlock and noticed that it never left Kipper's hands when he unlocked it, not even for a second. Well, said Harold sadly, I guess the jig is up. Nothing's over till we say it's over, said George. We've got to think of something else, and quick. Chapter 24. Foamy White Ectoplasm after school, George and Harold waited until the hallways were empty. Then they opened their secret stall in the boys' restroom. George had an idea. He climbed up on the stilts and Harold pulled the pants all the way up to the top of George's head. Then George tried walking around, looking out the zipper for an eye. Well, said George, how do I look? I'm not sure, said Harold. You kind of look like an afro with legs. Hmm, said George, as he peeked at himself in the bathroom mirror. I think I'm going to need a haircut. George's idea would have to wait until tomorrow. Unfortunately, the two boys had a backup plan. George and Harold ran to the convenience store up the street and bought four cans of shaving cream and a box of bendy straws. Then they hurried back to school. We're going to have to work fast, said Harold. The two boys opened their box of bendy straws and pushed the straw over the spray nozzle of each of the shaving cream of each can of shaving cream. Then George stuck a straw up Kipper's locker vent and began spraying. Whoa. Harold took 
another can, stuck the straw up the vent of Lugie's locker and started squirting. After a few minutes, George and Harold's cans were empty. Then they took two more cans and did the same thing to Bugs and Finkelstein's lockers. George and Harold hid the empty shaving cream cans in their secret restroom stall. Then they ran out the back door of the school toward the football field, screaming their heads off. The cheerleaders, who were just finishing their practice, saw George and Harold running around like lunatics. What's wrong, little boys? asked one of the cheerleaders. Well, well, we saw a ghost, cried George. Yeah, cried Harold. He was in the hallway over by the lockers. The cheerleaders were frightened. What did he look like, they asked. He was invisible, cried George, but he left a trail of foamy white ectoplasm wherever he went. The cheerleaders screamed. They were terrified, but they were also very curious. Mm. The girls huddled together in a tight, shivering group as they tiptoed into the school to see for themselves. Everything looked normal, but they still screamed a lot anyway. One of them pushed the button on the drinking fountain, and when water squirted out, they all screamed some more. What's going on? yelled Kipper, who had just gotten out of wrestling practice with his buddies. The cheerleaders screamed again. The, the, there's a ghost up there, cried Wendy Swan. Some little kid saw it. It was leaving foamy white ectoplasm everywhere. That's crazy, Kipper yelled. Ghosts aren't for real. He and his buddies laughed arrogantly as they unlocked their lockers and opened the doors. Suddenly, four giant waves of foamy white shaving cream splashed out into the hallway. Foamy white ectoplasm, yelled the cheerleaders. They screamed and ran for their lives. Ectoplasm, cried Bug. I've heard of that. Th that's ghost juice. I, I got ghost juice on my pants, Lugie wailed as he burst into tears. Get it off, get it off, get it off, screamed Finkstein as he jumped around spastically swatting at the shaving cream that covered his legs. I hate ghost juice. Ugh. There's no such thing as ghosts, Kipper yelled. But it was no use. Loogie, Bug and Finkstein slammed their lockers and screamed in horror as they slipped and slid in the foamy white ectoplasm. The three petrified pests tumbled down the stairs, tipping and pushing and elbowing each other as they struggled to glide out the front door. Kipper was at his wit's end. He plopped down on the floor in the middle of the hallway and curled up in a shivering ball. Uncle Benny, he wailed. As usual, Mr. Crop came running down the hallway. Boom, 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 boom. What's wrong? What's wrong? yelled Mr. Crop. Miss Kipper showed him, showed Mr. Crop the ectoplasm and told him the whole terrifying story. Mm. What? That's a bunch of bunk, yelled Mr. Crupp. This isn't ectoplasm, it's shaving cream. I use the same brand myself. Shaving cream, said Kipper. But, but how did it get inside our lockers? Well, somebody probably sprayed it through those vents on the door, Mr. Crupp said. It's the oldest trick in the book. Kipper studied the vents on the locker door as his passive, fearful expression slowly turned into a venomous visage of violence. Now Kipper was really mad. Chapter 25 Thursday afternoon. That afternoon at Harold's house, George and Harold wrote and illustrated a brand new comic book. When they were done, they scanned each page and printed out four copies on Harold's printer. Hmm. The comic book had to look very old, so they took a large bowl outside and filled it with water. Harold added two handfuls of dirt and stirred eight tablespoons of instant coffee crystals into the water. George carefully tore the edges of each page, then crumbled them up all up into little balls and soaked them in the giant bowl of filthy water. Once each page was completely soaked, the two friends carefully clipped them up in the garage so they could dry overnight. What on earth are you boys doing? said Harold's mother. It's for school, said Harold. Oh, said Harold's mum. Next, the two boys went back inside Harold's house. Now we've got to order some pizzas, said George. Order pizzas, cried Harold. Why? Kipper's just going to steal them again. That's what I'm counting on, George said with a devilish grin. George picked up the telephone and spoke with the manager of Piqua Pizza Palace. I'd like to order four pizzas for tomorrow, said George. What's the hottest kind of chilli peppers you guys have? Ghost chilli peppers? Hmm, can we get double ghost chilli peppers on each pizza? <laughs> 
After the pizzas were ordered, it was time for George's haircut. Harold went to the closet and found the clippers and scissors his mum always used to cut his hair. Harold had never cut anybody's hair before, but he was more than happy to give it a try. Just make the top part flat, said George, so it won't stick out when I wear those stilt pants. I'll do my best, said Harold. Harold clipped and cut, then he snipped and shaped. When he was done, George looked at himself in the mirror. Oh, I look awesome, George exclaimed. I'm going to wear my hair like this from now on. And he always did.